Naga are a species of immortal snake people who thankfully look like this now because they used to look like this. As well as a bunch of other ways, previous editions had five main Naga and five offshoot Naga. And Nagatha! Say hi Nagatha, now go away! We are focusing on the three we actually have to deal with in this edition. Guardian, Bone, and Spirit. They're all pumped full of magic and garden locations with strong connection to the past. It's what they are made to do after all, and when the ancient crater races fell, the Nagas claimed that they were their master's rightful heirs. If that seems arrogant, that's because it is. They think they should be the ones in charge of everything at all times. If you think you've heard this before, you're thinking of the other snake people, Yantin. Same crater race, same belief to be heirs, and their patron deities are shards of the same shattered god. While they occasionally work together against a common foe, they typically hate each other. That's as far as universal traits go though, so let's dive into specifics. Guardian Naga are so lawful good that the chief gods of the halfling and dwarven pantheons call them favored monsters. Nobody expects the nurturing matriarch to send a giant magic curse-throwing snake after them. Don't let your guard down entirely though, good intentions won't stop them from subjugating scaly people like lizard folk, and power can corrupt. That said, most spend their time researching spells and trying to stop evil, and they don't attack unprovoked. I'd really recommend you avoid provoking them too. They're essentially 11th level clerics with wickedly powerful contact poison they can spit 30 feet. They only attack once per round so their damage output's not the greatest, but they don't die when they're killed. God sends their soul back with 1-6 to six days standard shipping and now you are the evil they want to stop, and nothing short of a wish spell turns this off. Well, with one exception. Remember when I said Naga and Yanti hate each other? Well, they figured out a special ritual to turn Naga directly into an undead. It's it's still the same Naga, still the same soul, but bound in hateful servitude. Recent reports say these being common, though that would make them the only skeletal creature in current times to overcome not having lungs and lips. In the past, it's always been through telepathy, so I'd go with that. It loses power in the transfer, going down to a 5th level caster and losing a point of intelligence, but that's just initially. Being enslaved to people who hate them means they rarely live long, but we've seen these things grow stronger than ever over time. It just takes a very long time. These can be made out of any Naga, which for now means Guardian and Spirit. Spirit Naga are the chaotic evil ones, often lurking in the ruins of cities and temples they personally brought down. They love decay, eat rotten flesh, and are obsessed with making new spells and learning dark secrets. They're basically the hags of the scaly world. If one's in the area, be careful for traps. Dominate and charm person can force you into them or just into its venomous mom. Not as potent as the guardian naga, but still nothing to scoff at, and they can definitely have traps. They tend to enslave those around them. Well, I say that, and it is true, but they actually have a special transformation they can put someone through. And unlike most thrall transformations like the Yanti Broodguard, the Spirit Naga does it as purposefully cruel as possible. First, they rip out the victim's memories and skills while dulling their mind and infusing them with Charm Person. That part's pretty standard, but they purposely leave all the pain and loss it feels so they can cast light and manipulate it. They took the memory of who did this too, so the Naga that feels loyal to their sympathetic and understanding master. A master who's also trying to worsen their insecurities to gaslight them better. Oh, but don't think you can just tell them who did this. They won't believe you and lash out. They're still imbued with charm person, so this isn't even necessary. It's just for fun. It's like designing a hammer that feels pain. It's so terrible, I put them in the description. Share this cursed knowledge with others around you. It's the best way I could think of to show you how cruel these things are. Send one of these at your party and use the Nagatha to block for it while it lightning bolts and charms. If you think it's too hard, just lightning bolt through the Nagatha. I'm sure they'll forgive it later, for they are as cruel as the forces making me try to come up with an outro to this episode. Hit the buttons, bye!